How's it going? My name is Elias. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to change the brake pads on a Honda Civic Type R, the one right behind me. So as you can see, I already have the hood open, the car is already up in the air. I'll show you guys step by step how to change both the front and the rear brake pad for the Type R. Uh, it's quite an easy process, I've done it a few times already. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do it and how to do it safely and how to do it well. So I have all the tools that I need on my handy cart right here. If you haven't seen the video, I love this thing. I, I show you guys how to build it. I really recommend it. And uh, we already loosened up all the lug nuts. So we're just gonna take it off and I'll show you how to easily change these brake pads. It's actually really simple to do. One other thing I do want to point out before uh, we continue is that when you push the pistons in your brake calipers, as I'm going to show you with the Brembo brakes out in front and on the rear pads as well, you will be pushing fluid back out into the reservoir. And if you don't have any space for that fluid to come back out, it will overflow and you don't want that. It gets very messy. Brake fluid is very corrosive. So you really don't want that inside or around your car. So uh, I just got to make sure that there's enough room in there so that when I push the, the pistons back I, ha I have enough room to uh, get that fluid overflow in there I'll be checking it periodically as I go around the car changing the brake pads to make sure that there's enough space in there still left and if there isn't I'll use a turkey baster to kind of get that fluid out so the wheels up on the off the ground I've already loosened the lug nuts so I just have to take this out and take the wheel off very simple So since the wheel is off and we're talking about the brakes themselves and the brake calipers and the brake pads, let me tell you guys the two advantages that I think uh, of having the Brembo brake caliper. First advantage is that instead of having a, the floating caliper, so a floating caliper the way it works is there's one side of pistons that pushes on the caliper and the brake pads themselves and it'll pull the other side uh, as well. There's no really real even distribution of brake force uh, like this has because on Brembo brake pads instead of having a floating design it actually has as you can see two different places where brake fluid is going through and pushing on both sides of the brake rotor evenly distributing the brake force amongst both brake pads. The reason you want that is because it actually gives you more brake force and it evenly distributes the brake force among the brake pads themselves. The other advantage is that it's so easy to change these brake pads out. All you really need is a hammer and this small Phillips head screwdriver. Now you could use a rubber mallet just to save the paint and if you ever built your own rifle, you could use these type of punches as well if you're well versed with these, but you don't need to have this. Uh, it is kind of good to have it in case you want it. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, it's pretty cheap to have this at home and it just rolls up. It's pretty cool. But I'll show you guys how to use this and how to use just an old Phillips head screwdriver and a hammer. Right, so as I was saying, it's very, very easy to change these brake pads out. So easy, in fact, that a lot of people actually change their brake pads at the racetrack themselves. So they'll, they'll have a street pad and a track pad, and they'll switch them out pretty easily. That's actually what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be installing my Duralast Max brake pads on these uh, brake calipers and take out my factory OEM brake pads and save them for another track day. I recommend you do that if you do a lot of track days. It's just a better way to kind of save uh, the pads for what they're designed to do. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and watch that Duralast Max brake pad review. I'll put a link in the, in the description or I'll put it above somewhere so you guys can click on it. It's, they're actually pretty good pads for the street. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this and we'll do it the old fashioned way with a screwdriver and a hammer. Now you could go ahead and start doing it like this and start hammering away but 
I found it to be an easier way to turn this around, actually use the plastics, because I want to kind of save the paint on these calipers as much as possible. Eventually, I mean, it'll fade out and it'll, it'll kind of, the heat will kind of mess them up, but you want to save them as long as possible. So you kind of use the plastic, you put it against this, and you just slowly hammer. You can see it's pushed in already a little bit. You keep going. And there you have it. It's pushed in already. So now you can turn it around and it's a little bit easier. You have less chance of scratching the paint. You could actually use the different parts of the, the plastic handle as well, just to make sure. Again, I'm just being extra, extra careful. You don't have to do this. You could just go ahead and start doing it this way. And you really don't need that much hammer force. That's why I'm holding the hammer right up here. So I have the most control over the hammerhead. And just keep on hammering away. And there you have it. So the pin is now past the first brake pad. Sometimes you can just kind of hold this down and wiggle it away. Sometimes you can't. Which... It can be. Yeah, all right. You just keep hammering away slowly at it. It's really easy. You really can't mess this up. And that's it. So the pin is out. As you can see, the screwdriver is still in, being held on by the clip. So you just hold down the clip. Remove this. Remember, hold it down because this is going to fly off like that if you don't. So just hold it down and just let it go gently and now the bottom one is very very easy to remove. I'm not very good at these, at these precision strikes but just take your time. And you can do it too. I just prefer my old method. There you go. See, nice and pushed in already. Very easy. Fairly quick. It's literally been six minutes since I started doing this. And already most of it is done. The next bit is taking the pads out. So when taking the pads out, I usually open up the bleeder screws and I open it up so that when I start pushing on the pad, some fluid comes out and it's really easy to push the pistons back. But I want to show you guys how to do it without having to bleed it if you don't really want to. I'm not going to bleed the brakes today. I'll leave that for a different video in case you want to see that. So I'm going to show you guys how to kind of do it without it. So you're going to want to start by pulling this. And just a little bit of pulling like that can make it wiggle like this, as you can see. It's already wiggling. So you're going to lift the pad up a little bit. And then again, semi-gently, you're going to pull it. You're going to pull it. And what I'm doing here is I'm compressing the pistons that are in there so I can put the new brake pads in. As you can see right there, that did a lot, a lot to push the pistons back. And I'll do some pushing again. I'll do some pushing again. And that's it. As we can see, the pistons are pretty much pushed back to where they go. And I really didn't have to do that much work. I'm going to check on the level of the brake fluid. And they seem to be pretty good. So we'll continue on. We do the same thing back here. Now again, as I said, usually I, I am bleeding my brakes at the same time I'm changing the brake pads. But I want to show you guys how to do it otherwise. So you just push it. Like that, so you're able to wiggle it. It's not much force. You see, I can wiggle it now. So I wiggle it on top here, and then I push. As you can see there, I was able to push the pistons all the way back. I'm gonna pull it. Move it again. I'm gonna push it. 
and I'm going to pull it and lift up a little more, push it and pull it. All done. No damage to the brake pads at all. The brake pads still look pretty good. Plenty of meat left. Surprisingly, this is their sixth track day, so uh, they're pretty good. They, they are a little bit harder on the rotors. This is why I'm using the Duralast Max pads. It's going to be easier on the rotors. And I'm going to save these pads for another track day. So these are the Duralast Max brake pads. Uh, like I said, if you, uh, if you want to take a look at the review on them, they're actually really good for street driving. They're not good for track day driving, but for street driving, they do really, really well. Uh, you're going to see the squealer is going to be on this side. So you want the squealer to be on the outside of the car. You're going to place it in there. And there you have it. Pretty easy. And you can do the same with these. There you go. Oh yeah, nice and easy. After the brake pads are in, you take your factory clip. Now, these came with their own clip that I could actually use, uh, but I like the factory ones. I like the fact that the factory ones have these little clips in there that hold in the pin. I don't know if it's like an extra safety thing or not, but they have plenty of life left in them. After, let's say, you know, 10 or 20 brake pad changes, I may, I may go ahead and upgrade to some newer ones. These are just fine to use right now. So that's what I'm going to use. You just place it here. You take your pin. You're going to want to thread it from the back, just like that. Now, as you notice, I'm not using any brake grease. I don't really care too much about brake squeal or anything, so I'm good without it. So as you can see, I've threaded the pin through both pads, through the caliper, and I've used this. I haven't tightened anything yet because I do still have to put in the bottom pin. To do that, you have to press down on this, thread this through, press down, there you go. Now it's being held down by the other brake pad, and I can keep on using the rubber mallet. If you want to use the old school tools, I like to use the back of it as always, and just hammer that in mostly in. I'll hammer the other side. There we go. And there we go. And it's done. We have new brake pads in there. I like to always push on this with my hand to see if it's gonna move. It doesn't move. We are good to go. I do recommend bleeding your brakes as you do this, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. I will show you guys how to bleed your brakes in another video. That's it, that's how you change your Brembo brake pads in your Honda Civic Type R. If you have any questions, put it down below. I'm always happy to answer them. I'm happy to talk to you guys. Uh, you can email me at realflyinggato at gmail.com. You can message me on Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Facebook as well. Happy to talk to you guys. And uh, that really does it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Peace out. All right, let's do this. Terminal understeer over here.